This Week in Startups is brought to you by Walker Corporate Law, a boutique corporate law firm specializing in the representation of entrepreneurs, and by GoToMeeting. Sign up for GoToMeeting and use the promo code START to receive your free trial. That's what it's all about, man. They said, money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Hi and welcome everyone to our fifth Twist Paris uh, meetup and uh, for those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Kirsten Winkler, I'm the uh, organizer, but as I can see many familiar faces, some new ones, so a warm welcome for everybody. And uh, well, the first Twist meetup actually with uh, Jason and also Tyler there yep. themselves, which is fantastic and uh, awesome. So thank you so much for coming awesome over. To, awesome Great to be, be here. here. So a little program for today. We won't uh, waste much time with uh, just talking, but uh, just have a few words from Patrick about the Le Comping uh, Incubator as they are so kind and uh, hosting us uh, today. And uh, well, Patrick, some words about Le Comping. Thank you. So um, many of you probably know Le Comping. Uh, Jason, Le Comping is the first accelerator in Paris, um, in France actually. Uh, what we do is we bring in 12 companies. Uh, this past season we had 130 applications. Um, we brought in 12 companies. We put them through a six-month program. The first three months are largely focused on the product. Then the second three months are focused on business development, raising funds, and really getting off the ground. Um, so they're moving quite forward quite quickly. Um, some of them are here today. You'll be hearing from one of them. And uh, I really hope you enjoy being here. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Okay, so we have scheduled three pitches for today, and um, the first one is uh, today, where is he, Jerome, of, uh, ah yeah, so please come up here, and um, he's going to present his startup, liveshow.com. You know the rules, right? Three, two, go. No pressure, three, two, go. <laughs> Thank you. So my name is Jerome and I want to introduce you to my new service launched last uh, month, liveshow.com. So uh, first a question, Jason, uh, it's Christmas, so maybe in the past years you offered at some point a picture frame to a relative or something? Multiple. Multiple. And I'm sure they're all gathering dust somewhere in some closets. Correct. Uh, simple uh, reason, they never updated, they were never updated, uh, never with new uh, pictures, so they will start there with the same pictures and people will get bored. And uh, right now we have even more screens like this in our home, uh, tablets, connected TVs, uh, even picture frames, some left. And we would like this, all these screens to receive new pictures automatically whenever we publish them, whether, whether they are published on the internet or on our mobile. So that's what my service is about. My service is about uh, broadcasting photos from your mobile or from multiple uh, services to any connected screen within your home. So, for example, let's say now you want to broadcast photos from your mobile to your TV back home to show your daughter uh, how Paris is nice and so on. You will take a photo and you will immediately appear on the TV of your, uh, in, your TV, in, your, in your home. Uh, the same, you can, when you publish new photos on Pigaza, for example, automatically they will appear on all the tablets and TVs of your family and uh, you will be able to watch them together at the same time. So our application, our service, allows real-time uh, broadcast and synchronization of the photos between multiple screens. We have a private mode where the photos are directly transferred from one device to another. In terms of business model, we have a freemium model and we offer the service as a branded service. And finally, today we reached 100,000 uh, downloads for our application. Wow, very good. Let's get a big round of applause. So, um, some of you guys have seen the show before, people have seen This Week in Startups, good, almost everybody. Um, so we always like to rate the presentations, right, and give constructive feedback, and we find the best way to do that is to actually give a score, and we've created a scoring system, which, it's pretty accurate, and if you watch the show you'll see, uh, we normally take points off for certain things. In this case, this is an almost perfect pitch, in my opinion, 
you uh, defined a problem. The, everybody bought these picture frames thinking that they were going to have a really good experience. And they didn't. And you made it personal, not just to yourself, but to me. Have you done this? Yes, I have. Are they being used? Are they collecting dust? Yes, they are. Now I'm really interested. That's a great way to start a pitch, whether it's to a VC angel um, or to an employee uh, or a prospective employee or a partner. And you define the problem really, really well. And you had good energy during it. It's, clearly, it's clear you're passionate about it. The business model absolutely makes sense, premium. I could absolutely see myself um, uh, using it. I love the idea of a closed Instagram just for my family. I set up my mom's TV and my brother's set up, you know, this picture frame or an iPad and the screensaver on the iPad is now all of our family's photos. And it made me think of 10 questions like, can we all have a photo pool where everybody in the family has these picture frames or screensavers and it's everybody's photo. So I get to see my two brothers and their kids. And uh, is that the way it works? Uh, today, it's uh, each person has a different channel. Ah where you add pictures, but we plan to allow other people who watch this channel to add their own photos. So I, I'm going to give the presentation a nine. It was almost perfect. I think I'm pretty sure Tyler's going to give a pretty similar score. And on a business level, it's, it's just a, you know, photo sharing is an eight. Just in general, it's not as big as Facebook. It's a real business. You will make money from it. And I think there's a lot of opportunities that are going to happen because of connected TVs. So I would give the, the pitch a nine and the business an eight. What do you give it, Tyler? Pitch wise. Yeah, it's a, it's a nine. And um, I, I was Can wanting to think a, of anything in the pitch that would have made it a 10 that would have taken it over the top. I, I felt like we got your point early on and you got a little bit repetitive and you should have used that repetitious moment to <laughs> reveal more newer things. Um, you know what I mean? Like it was, yeah. it was pretty clear pretty early on what it, what you had done, and that's due to you know you had you were very clear about what you were doing, so you can you could add a killer feature like, and we're adding this, and mm. we're adding this. Like it was, you 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 did repeat yourself. You know, at moments 30, 40, 50, 60 seconds. Yes, we get it. All the screens see all the photos. Right, right. We get it. But what's the killer feature after that? Right. Are you, you going to make hardware? Is there is a, the group pool going to be something interesting? Are you going to make a timeline out of it? What is the what is the next piece? Or or what I was interested to hear more the business aspect of it. Right. Um, that part I'm um, still yeah. curious. About. Or you could even define some more of the problem. Like well, you could define more of the problem. In my mind, is you, you 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 didn't mention Apple's new what is it called? The iCloud photo syncing. Photo yeah. stream. And photo stream, right? And I use it and I love it because I have an iPhone, but not everyone has an iPhone. Right. So, and there's going to be a lot of people on Android, and I don't know, they don't have a, a sync is all of them, right? Like, you're platform agnostic, right? Yeah. So I would use that in your pitch. So in one way, you're embracing the enemy, and at the same time, showing why you have a benefit over that yeah. approach. Because um, some people are going to say, oh, well, what about, I, you know, the stream? So you say, oh, sometimes it's a really good strategy to embrace what people think you're afraid extend, to embrace. And extend, like Microsoft. Yeah. Huh? And like embrace Microsoft. Ex embrace, embrace and extend. And extend. Yes. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could basically preempt the question of how does this compete with um, Apple's new iCloud, and it's very simple. Not everybody's going to have a $600 exactly. iPhone. And, and you have, can have multiple streams, you have because multiple streams. photo stream is one stream. So on the business, so you give it a, a nine A pitch. nine on the pitch, well, and... Uh, I, I still want to get a sense for where you're monetizing out of this. Yeah, is it going to just be 50 bucks a year, 10 bucks a year? Uh, it's going to be so uh, ads inserted in the stream, and then you'll have a, a paying option where you pay a small fee per month to get access to extra features. You could just every 20th photo with an ad. Yes. Uh, no, it's going to awesome. be between series. <laughs> and everyone in your house is watching this ad. The ads is a terrible series. idea. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> People will hate you. It's going to no, be too bad. No ads. So bad, don't don't do ads. Yeah. Just limit the amount of uploads and limit the number of users. So there's two different ways to do, oh, yeah, like, premium. premium. Yeah. One of them is, like, um, annoying people with ads, sort of the Zynga model, and it, it just makes people hate your products and hate you. Um, if you do that kind of massively, you know, aggressive advertising, and I don't think advertisers want to be in the middle of people's photo streams. But they, but if you said you could upload up to 25 photos for free or 100 photos for free, if people who use it are going to get to 100 and give them that little pop-up that says, hey, please support us 
so that we can add more features. And you say it just like that, and Basically, you're the big winner. The Flickr model. The Flickr model, which is people would be like, yeah, I'll just pay because I want to support you. Um, but very well done. What was your name again? I didn't hear it. Jerome. Jerome. Let's hear it for Jerome. Any one, one question. How much would you pay for that? How much would I pay for per that? Per month, per year. I, I would just price it on a yearly basis, and I think it's competitive uh, with Flickr, Dropbox, or iCloud, uh, which means depending on usage anywhere, I would start at low 10 to 20 euro a year and then go up based on usage to 50 maybe would be the breaking point. So you could pick anywhere between 10 and 50 and maybe have two yep. or three levels. Yep. Maybe you know 10 euro gets you three people can log in. In twenty euro, yeah. you know, five, and you know, you can just make like oh, three the tiers. Channels, the different channels. Yeah, then, just three, maybe yeah. just three levels, like mm. small. You know, my family, my extended family. You know, I got a big family. I've got an Irish family, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of cousins. <laughs> you know, but really well done. Uh, great, well done. Thank you. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Well done. Hey everybody, it's Jason Calacanis of This Week in Startups. I'm here with Scott Walker, uh, who is the CEO and founder of the Walker Corporate Law Group. Welcome back to the program. Hey, great to be here, Jason. Uh, let's take another one of these critical issues. Uh, when you're starting a company, intellectual property, right. IP law, this includes everything from trademarks mm -hmm. to patents to copyright, lots of different uh, words. But typically it goes down something like this, and I get approached by these as an angel investor. I have an idea that I've been working on on the weekends right. while I'm working at IBM, exactly. Google, Microsoft, <laughs> and I want you to invest in it. Right. And now I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a second, were you doing this on company time? Were you using the company laptop? Who owns this right. IP? Right. Is the IP clean? Uh, what do founders need to know uh, in this type of situation? How do they get themselves um, angel ready, fundable? when they, the IP was maybe created on the weekends? Yeah, no, that's a great question. There are certain mistakes that are deadly, and IP is certainly one of them. We talked about vesting uh, previously. IP ownership, you know, and the sad thing is, Jason, as you know, it comes up when the investors come in yep. and do their diligence, and it's like, what, what the is going on here? You were working over at uh, you know, yep. IBM, like you said, and doing right. this. So the, the answer is, you gotta sit down with a good lawyer, and it's sort of like a checklist of IP ownership issues that we need to walk through and address. Right. And it may very well be okay. You know, if you're not, for example, in California, if you're not using their facilities, if you're truly moonlighting and you're doing it on the weekend and mm. it's not in their space, then you may be okay. But I mean, there are some tricky issues in there. We got to make sure right. that. that you and know, it's like little tests right. that add up That's right. to the other party having a case or not. Right. And this is what I That's think right. confuses a lot of young entrepreneurs is that it's not black and white. Right. There's interpretation to the law. Right. Exactly. And sometimes you have a good relationship with your employee, you might be able to get a waiver, you know? Right. It's like, hey, here's what, what I'm doing. What is a waiver? A waiver is basically uh, the employer saying to you, you know, Jason, the entrepreneur, you, you know, it, it's murky. We may have ownership rights to your IP, but we're going to waive those rights. We're going to let you go ahead and do your venture. Yep. We love you. Maybe we'll take a little equity. Maybe give us one, whatever it is. But we're not going to cause any problems. You can bring that wave to your investor and say everything's cool. And I've had this happen multiple times here at Mahalo. I've had people say, I'm working on this project on the sure. weekend. Right. Would you sign a waiver for me? Yeah. And then I say, hmm, do I like this employee or not? <laughs> this is why it's important to be good to your boss. <laughs> That's right. I usually think, you know, and people sometimes ask, can I work on this? And they, they do it ahead of time. They yeah. even do a waiver ahead of time yeah. so they don't get in any trouble. Right. I'm thinking of working on this project. Right. Will you sign a waiver? Right. And Or I've been working on a project. Will you sign a waiver? And most bosses will be reasonable. If they're not, you really shouldn't work for that kind of boss right. anyway. That's and you right. need to get out of there. Um, well, these are great issues. And, of course, your firm is a boutique firm, which means you don't charge huge fees. You got that $2,500, all you can eat, uh, all the questions and emails. Uh, startup package that's yeah, I think working it's, out pretty well I think for it's people. Twenty nine hundred, yeah. It's um, so in all filing fees includes you pay about nine hundred bucks filing fees. You form a corporation in Delaware. You qualify where you're located, usually California. Ah. And there's a whole bunch of documents that we you take. You do care that of. for twenty nine hundred bucks with yeah, all, everything. Just, in just uh, you lose money on that. Well, I it's guess. just it's a way of you know who gave me the idea, Nivy at uh, Angel uh, List. Uh, oh, Angel, really? Yeah. He said lose money on the he formation, but like make freemium, it back. Right, build a relationship. Premium, yeah. Yeah, don't make it free because then you get a lot of kind of you know oddball screwballs. Yeah, they gotta have a little bit of skin in the game. Right. 
so they right. So so they actually are committed, right? right. It's kind of a little test, and right. um, yeah, it's really a great way of building relationship. It's uh, obviously there are a lot of questions first times entrepreneurs have. Yeah. They're afraid to pick up the phone and call the lawyer because the guy's always billing. Right. That's why it's like call us. We want to yeah. help you. You know, let's right. button down these. And issues. you're you're investing in them for the long term because exactly. if they become hey they get that's to right. be around there, see around, it could become a meaningful client for you guys. Yeah, and that's what we want. Our, what we're trying to do is help entrepreneurs. Right. There are a lot of unfortunately bad guys out there. You know, right. at your level and the level of you know the Brad Fells and the Mark Seuss, you guys are amazing, right? right? Trust, you know, it's not an issue. You probably don't even need a lawyer. But when you get down in the second and third tier, unfortunately, there's some bad guys out there. Yeah, well, you have these, uh, yeah, all kinds of weird operators weird. who want to take take five percent of, of your right, whatever they it wanna, is. You want you to hire them to raise money for you, and that's right. like five percent warrants or ten percent. They just totally destroy you. these like weird characters, right. and you do need to have a lawyer to protect you before you sign anything. Exactly. Anything you're going to sign, you got to show to your lawyer first. Hey, Scott's a great walker. If you're a startup company, I highly recommend you hire him. Uh, and you can reach him at s walker at walkercorporatelaw.com. Yeah. S walker at walkercorporatelaw.com. You should just get Scott. All right. I, <laughs> I mean, you're you know, right. I'm wearing the tie over here, and you're nice and casual. <laughs> just get Scott at Walker Corporate right. Law. I got to right. switch. Uh... Well, let's get on with the show. Let me see. Where's Richard? There's Richard. Yeah. There's Richard. And uh, Richard is going to present you prepmyfuture.com. Oh. Okay, you know the rules. Uh, roughly Three, on two, go. Uh, so I'm Richard from uh, Prep My Future. And uh, while you might know that uh, every year Americans spend around $4 billion on test preparation for tests such as the SAT and the GMAT, you might not know that in the last eight years, the amount of money that they're spending on private tutors, one-on-one -on -one tutors, has increased by over 1,000%. There's a couple of reasons for that. The first is probably that these tests are really, really important at several different phases in a career, and so people are willing to pay to get well prepared. The second reason is that the traditional model of education, everybody has to learn the same thing, so everybody should prepare in exactly the same way, isn't working. People want something a bit more personal, a bit more adaptive. So at Prep My Future, we're taking that adaptive, personalized model and optimizing it for the web. So a visit to our, to our platform is a bit like a visit to a kind of doctor that knows everything about the test that you're going to take. But asking you a few questions and hearing your responses, he's going to find out where you're doing well and where you need a bit more work. And where you need a bit more work, he's going to give you targeted lessons and targeted questions that get harder as you get better to really help you improve as quickly and efficiently as possible. So we think this is a model that can really disrupt education, and uh, we encourage you to come visit at uh, prepmyfuture.com. Wow, that's very strong. Uh, yeah, that's good. Hey, Tyler, you go first this time. Yeah. Um, I think there's one other reason that the test prepping in the States is taking off is because the Chinese students are paying lots of money for this uh -huh. stuff. Like, there's a big market. Yeah. Um, um, it, even if, what does this cost? Uh, it's for, for the moment, it's a platform access for a month. Full yeah. access to sort of everything is 150. And yeah. then afterwards, it becomes uh, 75. Uh-huh. Yeah, this, I think this is a great space well, to be Well, let's talk about the pitch. Yeah, pitch-wise, uh, I'm already interested. Like, I'm already past the pitch. Like, you, you, so that's... Yeah, but let's go back to the pitch. Okay. Um, it's always good about that's, the pitch? But that's what you want. You want to feel like the pitch didn't even get in the way of itself. Right. You know what I mean? I didn't... Uh, so, anyway, that's, that's exactly what you're looking for. Um, I'm trying to think of what I would do to change it. What do you think is the killer feature? What is the, what's the one thing that you took away from his pitch? <coughs> what was the one fact, and was there one fact that you took away from it that you can mention? No. Right. Okay, so... Need to kill a so, th this is one of the... Um, it, it was an absolutely solid pitch. It's mm -hmm. definitely an eight. Um, it wasn't personal, right? We didn't know why you built it. Is there a personal story that you felt you got ripped off or you needed this or did you just take it because you think it's a good market and, and most people at one time or another have to go through the test prep industry right. and uh, but you like, yourself went through it sure and, I and you were frustrated case. yeah sure and you had problems that this product would so would solve absolutely that's why we created it okay if you start with that that's so much more compelling all right i took the gmats i spent fifteen hundred dollars I felt ripped off at the end, my score only went up 5%, and it turned out that the things I needed to know, they didn't teach me. Oh, and those things were X, Y, and Z. I decided to build an online course that would be only 
40 euros a month, pay as you go, and would solve these problems. Okay. Boom. So now you've personalized it. Boom. Or you could have asked anybody here. Did anybody here ever spend any money on test prep? Anybody in the room spend money on test prep? <laughs> a good number of people. Half, a third of the room, maybe. They're all college dropouts or startups. Um, you, have to, you have to know your audience. Um, does anybody know, another way to ask that question, by the way, is does anybody know anyone who spent a lot of money on test prep? Anybody know anybody who spent money on test prep? Everybody knows somebody, right? So you get a, a lot more when you ask a question. So anyway, the, the, I would say that would have made it more personal. And what is the one thing you wanted us to take away from the presentation? What's the most important feature of this business? Or what you're trying to solve right now as an entrepreneur? I think it's it's the disruption of the traditional model. It's the idea, the sort of magisterial prof that tells everybody what to do. Right. That we're trying to get away from that and get to something that's personal, that's that's adapted to you. Adaptive. Adapted I think to adaptive you. Adaptive learning yeah. is uh, the big key right. So word for you said adaptive learning, and what everybody probably here hears is a buzzword. Mm -hmm. So you could have, in just ten seconds, given an example of what adaptive learning is. So Kirsten might be very good at solving. Uh, math problems mm -hmm. um, that have to do with variables. Sure. Um, and so we're not going to waste her time doing what she's good at. Once our test knows that she's good at that, we're going to focus on her pain point, which is she really is terrible at what? I don't know. Whatever. She's perfect at everything. But she would be terrible at something, theoretically. So she's really bad at the quadra quadratic equation. We're going to focus on that. So there's no wasted time. Okay, so then we would have all taken that. But that. And that's one of the things, as an entrepreneur, we get caught up in our products so much because we're so close to them. You know, we're like standing in front of the elephant like this that we don't see the big picture. It's really helpful when you practice these to step back and say, do people even know what that means, adaptive learning? I mean, yeah. if, you, if you take a second to think about it, you will know. But as an entrepreneur, it's your job to make sure we know. Okay. Um, in terms of as a business, so I give it an eight. In terms of the business, um, it's a huge business. And the adaptive learning part is an absolutely great way to go about it. So I, I, I give the business... As it is, an eight, eight and a half, it's good. One of the things you want to do sometimes is to know your audience and know where the future is going, right? Prep my future. So. Um, what are the future trends on the internet today? Uh, in, in what aspect of the internet? Where do you think technology is going? What are the three big trends right now? Well, I think uh, certainly, certainly social and certainly... You got one of the three. Personalized social, as it were. Okay. Uh, I don't know, maybe localization, that kind of thing. Local uh, is big, yes. You've got that. That's as you be, there's four. There's a real big one that you're not naming. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's two big ones. Uh, mobile, mobile and video. Mobile and right. video, okay. Right. So, uh, mobile, video, local, um, and social. These are the big trends right now. Uh, personalization has been around for a long time. It's mm. an important trend, but it's not like peaking. So, knowing that, if you said this was an iPad app, or this was available on your iPhone, so you could keep studying when you're on the train and use those moments when, you know, you're laying in bed the last ten minutes before you go to bed. You would just get, you would just add points, and then when a venture capital hears the capitalist hears the pitch, checking they go, his boxes, they're, they're checking their boxes. Yeah. Oh, okay, it's mobile. Oh, it's local. Yeah. The people in China are going to get something different than the people in Paris and different than the people in New York. Um, so in the business, eight point five. Give some scores, Tom. For pitch wise, it's an eight. So it's very solid. Yeah. Um, and like you said, um, you could have made it a little more personal and emotional. Okay. It was pretty dry, but I, I, I'm just so interested in the idea. I'm a big believer, like, I think you're going to, it'd be hard not to make money in this. Like, you, you're you not doing your job if you're not making money at this. If you lose money at this, you suck. R right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you cannot do this wrong. All right. Yeah. That, so that's But I, give I, the business a score. As presented, as presented. Adaptive learning. As presented, I'd say an eight, but you could so easily be a nine. Yeah. I mean, just the, the mobile piece alone makes it a nine instantly. Yeah. And mo for, let alone if you made it mobile and social. You make it a mobile social learning experience where I pop it open and I see my classmates or I just see anybody and now I'm doing mm. equations with other people and I can see how many people got this wrong or right in Paris in... Mm. France, in Europe, that's, in that's on the its world. Way. That's, that's right. arriving shortly. Yeah. So one of the great things about being an entrepreneur is um, you can, when you have accomplished something, for every uh, couple of units of accomplishment you have, like let's say five units of accomplishment, you're allowed one or two uh, 
units of what's coming up, right? Mm -hmm. So if you accomplish, like, you know, if Mark Zuckerberg gets up on stage and says, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, everybody's like, okay, Mark Zuckerberg's going to do X, Y, and Z, because he did A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Mm. You know, and Steve Jobs gets up and says, you know, rest in peace, but if he did and he says, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, people are like, well, of course you are, you're Steve Jobs, and then you're going to add 10 letters to the alphabet, right. you know, and we're all going to start using them, um, literally. Uh, and so because you have a solid product with a great domain name, with a great revenue model, you should have told us. And by the way, this is going to be social and mobile. Okay. And that's going to really change everything. So we've got a, a nice long roadmap, and, you know, especially with VCs, because I'm assuming that at some point as an entrepreneur, you may want to raise money. Yeah, of course. So you have to know that audience, and you're totally allowed to give them the next six months of roadmap. You know, and broad things. And don't worry about them stealing it. They don't generally do that. Um, but really well done. Kirsten, you might have some feedback on this. You can give scores. <laughs> As the two mentioned, there's also one uh, from the States, uh, pretty successful already doing uh, GMAT uh, and video sure. and adaptive. Sure. So probably you know about them uh, as competitors. Sure. But uh, yeah, I think, uh, do you think this adaptive learning thing is most um, likely to be successful for STEM? Or do you think uh, you could extend into TOEFL other prep for, for languages, for example, as well? Uh, I think it's something that you, if the platform itself is done well, I think it's something you can extend uh, infinitely. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the idea is to create a, a base yep. where people can put uh, information from different tests and the same principle works for every test. Give it a score. What do you think the presentation was? Well, you but I'm so like. into online education. This one is really difficult for me. I'm not, like, but that's okay. neutrally... You, you want to hear the honest? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you give the pitch, and then what do you give the business? So you maybe well, we there. also worked yesterday on the pitch. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. How did he do today? Yeah, well, he didn't... It wasn't bad, it wasn't it, perfect, yeah. so it's somewhere between bad and perfect. Yeah, I told him that yeah. I would wish he would add the personal element, so I would probably give it a... 8, 7.5 yeah, okay. in the pitch. And then the and idea? The, the, I think the idea is as you can spread in so many uh, verticals and doing something with mobile, of course you should. Um, video is worthwhile thinking about. Um, I think adaptive learning is not only the buzzword, but is one of the next, th uh, not only trends, but things for um, online education. I think the business idea, let's say at least within online education, could be, I would say, 8.59. Wow. Mm. Awesome. Very well done. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. And uh, the last pitch is uh, ah, Guillaume. Uh, Guillaume. Guillaume. Guillaume, yes. Guillaume. I love that name. Thanks. Pitch not as much as I love the shirt. What would you get? Is that from <laughs> Galleries Lafayette? No, not far That's from That's where there. I go on the summer It's called Dizzy World. Oh, okay. We'll go there later. Um, pitching Pictarine. You know the rules. Uh, Three to go. Okay. Oh. It's in Jason. We have the same problem with the photos. Uh, I have got photos uh, spread over my computer, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Google. And when I'm looking for specific photos, uh, I can't find it easily. So that's why we have a built Pictarina. To show you the photo you want to see now. So how does it work? We import automatically all your photos from your computer, from Facebook, Google+, Instagram. We have many more services. Then we organize these photos for you automatically. And you just sit and relax and enjoy your photos in full screen slideshows. You can then interact with your friends by adding comments or uh, like a photo. You can even download the photo you really like to have a safe copy at home and all of that with one click. So we already have 10,000 users that are enjoying Pictorin on any browsers, including iPad. And Pictorin is free, and we will release premium features in the coming month around storage and synchronization. OK, uh, very well done. Thank you. OK, so you are tackling a problem that a lot of people are going after. Everybody is really interested in photos right now. Yeah. Photos are an incredibly popular category. About a third of the traffic on Facebook is photos. Um, f in fact, if you took out photos and games, 
on Facebook, what would be left? Not much. Not much. That's the right answer. <laughs> Not much. I mean, we, what's left is really people dating each other. So really, those are the three main components of Facebook success. Photos, um, games, and dating. Relationship status. It's really predicated on just those three things. And they've tried to bring other things into it. Nothing else has really stuck. Maybe the music sharing one. Um, what that means is it's hard to find a problem um, that people really need. And so in this case, as described in looking at the website, this idea of collecting all the photos and putting them into one place, not sure that that's a huge problem for most people. Um, and so while it's well designed and I could understand maybe you or I having that problem because we use eight services, it reminds me in a way of Posteris, which is the opposite. Posteris is a site where you can send your photo in and yeah. it puts it in 10 different places. You're saying, I'm gonna take it from those 10 different places and pull it into one. Yeah. How many people here use more than five photo sharing services? Was, see, this is exactly how I thought he should start. Yep. How many people here use more than four file sharing services? Share on more than four, one, two, three, four people. I, I'm, I'm in that group too. How many people use three or more photo sharing services? That would be Instagram. Okay, one, two, three, four, okay. How many people use two? And how many people use only one? Okay, so the average is two or three. That might not be enough of a pain point right now, and this is an avant-garde, like cutting edge, you know, lead, this is not laggards. The laggards use one, maybe two. The, the folks who are super tech savvy use two or three. So does anybody have a problem with organizing their photos across the two or three services? Who feels they have a, who feels that the, uh, the company as presented solves a problem that they have? Okay, so that's good. Some people do, yeah. And some people don't. So maybe you're onto something, maybe not. I'm, it would be interesting to see. Yeah, we have uh, talked a lot, in fact, with our users, and yeah. they were asking for one thing, organization. Because huh. before we were doing photo sharing, and a lot of companies are doing that, and yeah. the, it's not, the, the real point is organization. Right. They have too much photos. Yeah. So, I felt like the pitch was focused on this one problem, which didn't connect with me all that much, and I didn't think was that important. And uh, I didn't think that I have that problem too much, or I couldn't envision other people having it. I didn't actually buy that you had it that much. So the pitch sort of felt a little bit flat for me. Um, and on a business level, I also have a lot of concerns. If it's not a major problem for people, they're not gonna pay for it. So the freemium model is probably not gonna work. So I feel like on a business level, it's like very niche which would be like a maybe a six for me. So, however, the most important thing about being an entrepreneur is getting in the game. And you're in the game, and when you get in the game and you try, this is, is, this, this is your second idea, right? Yeah, the first was just a post, this, and you started that one. Uh, you mean the first one, photo sharing? And, well, yeah, yeah, when did you have photo sharing? Yeah, yeah. A year ago? Second. When did you have photo sharing out in the public? Two years ago, three years um, ago, one year ago? Uh, one year and a half. Yeah. yeah, and then this feature came out. Yeah, it's the uh, Renew. Very new, and it was based on what your users had told you. Yeah, we, we made a survey and they yeah. asked them. Okay, yes, and so maybe there's something. Um, so anyway, I think that this is a good iteration on photo sharing, mm -hmm. but I think there's a bigger idea that's gonna come to you. Uh, and I have an idea of what it is, actually. And I was inspired by what you said. But I'm gonna let Tyler give his scores, and that's a teaser. So when Tyler finishes giving his scores, I'm gonna tell you this idea that I think would be huge. Good. What did you want us to uh, know or feel or remember? What do you want me to feel about this or remember tomorrow about this? If I can only remember one thing, yeah. What do you? What is it you want me to remember? Your 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 life will become easier, really easier because photos are really spread over a lot of devices, and when you want to share. I mean, I was in Thailand this uh, this summer, and I took um, I have taken photos with my DSLR, and I've put them in on my computer, and I've taken photos with um, Instagram, and I wanted to see them in the same place, and that's impossible today. And with Photon, we do that. It's it's just uh, automatic, and so that it's easier. Yeah, that, and by the way, you said it better this time than you did even in your pitch. Yeah. 
Um, that was you, a message. You told the story of you, you were in Thailand. A, a personal, real uh, story. You made it very personal. Like, uh, okay. And you know, I now that you mentioned that, there were photos I had on Instagram that I didn't have on my iPad, and I wanted to show people those. And I just thought, you know what, I would like to. And there's no Instagram iPad app out yet, and yeah. I would like to sync those in. Yeah, and so, the thing is, we offer you the possibility to download all these uh, Instagram and uh, uh, photos uh, from Facebook yeah. uh, on your computer. So what do you give it as a score? What is your pitch in your business? Um, Pitch-wise, I want to say 6.5, but I, the way I would have done what you did with the questions, I would have done a little differently. I would have said, how many people use Instagram? Like, okay, you know, a bunch of people use Instagram. How many people use Instagram? Okay, right. But well, how many people use Picasso? How many people and then use it Picasso? Looks like, and then what it does is it looks like, oh, that's your, your brain assumes, oh, that's a lot of the same people, yeah. right? So you're already starting to see, oh, there's probably a problem here. Like, people are using multiple services. How many, people have, put, how many people have put a picture on Facebook? Right. Yeah, this Facebook. is a really good... How many people have put, a, have put a picture on Flickr before? How many people have put a picture on MySpace? <laughs> <laughs> like a long time ago, how many people put one down there? Right. I don't know. So anyway, but did, it, did MySpace come to France? No, I don't think no. I've ever made it. I think it made it as like, yeah, maybe Bordeaux, but that was. <laughs> but you, you, you uh, need to know. But so anyway, that was actually a really good tip because it, it did make it seem like there was a bigger problem. When I asked the question, I sort of narrowed it. Yeah. And I mean, when you you need to know as part of this pitch, this this the the best statistics that will prove your point, like. 65% of people use three multiple, you know, sharing services. Yeah, yeah that you, you preempt need, you, my... You need to know that number. You need to have it memorized. It needs to be real, and it needs to go find that number and have a great source for it. Yeah, it's that out should there be somewhere. off the top of your head. Right. Yeah. That statistic will be key to getting people... You would have preempted my objection, right. right? And part of your job as an entrepreneur... Sorry. Part of your job is that I like the way you hold the microphone. Yeah, I'm like that. Really, yeah. really relaxed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Feels weird. Though. Yeah. Um, your job as an entrepreneur is to know what my objections are going to be and preempt them so that I'm left going, "Wow, this not only did not only is this a, a good idea, but this guy's sharp enough to know answer my questions as I'm thinking them yeah. during the presentation." Uh, but give it a square child. Come on. Business. I, I don't know how you're charging or what you're charging. He says he will charge at some point for premium. Yeah, because people are asking for back uh, 20, 20 a year or something like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's one of those things like Dropbox where if you get, you know, it's this kind of a simple solution, and if people really feel like it's valuable, you'll get everybody at 20 bucks a year. So it could be absolutely huge. Um, having said that, I'll call it a se I think it's a seven business. Okay, just start. Yeah. Photo sharing was like a five, so now you're at a seven. That's part of being an entrepreneur to move that. And, and by the way, I mean everyone. Let's give the pitch. What'd you give the pitch? I gave the pitch already six five. Okay. But I feel like the other thing is let's acknowledge the fact that photo photo apps are exploding. Yeah. By the way, this is the real problem. The real problem is that fo photo apps are exploding, and they're all getting funding, and mm. and and you're already preemptively providing a solution that this problem is just starting. Yeah. Like that that whole hand raising thing. This is true now, it's, but it's only just beginning because how many startup photo sharing st apps are in the store now? Um, uh, you need to know that. You need to know there oh, are yeah. 1,526 oh, yeah. photo sharing apps in the iPad store, in the iPhone yeah. store. Last week, four, yes. 14 photo sharing apps were launched. You know, it's, it's yeah, fragmented. Color and all of them. Like, yeah, and if you had a slide with all those logos, that would be like, wow. The visually, like, make it very obvious. Okay. Um, okay, so here's my big idea. Downloading and organizing our apps, or our photos, okay, that's good, and maybe that's a problem for people, but, you know, if I have some Instagram photos and some Flickr, I can, you know, Facebook, I, I still know my logins for all those. It's not a big deal. But what if you created an app that, when I logged in with the social graph, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, pulled down all of my contacts photos and put them into my iPad app. So I'm not downloading or organizing my photos, but I pull down Tyler's Flickr, Instagram, and Facebook, and Kirsten's Facebook, Flickr, Twitter, and then when I open the iPad app, I'm like, let me see what photos Tyler's put up. And then I see everything from his Twitter stream, everything from his Facebook stream, everything from Instagram, and I don't, it sort of becomes like the database of all photos. And now that would be controversial. Right, like, oh my God, you're downloading everybody's photos to this iPad app, whatever. But it's 
downloading it to an iPad app and storing it for later versus viewing it on Facebook, it's really no different. I mean, it's a public photo, it's a public photo, it's no big deal. But that, to me, would be, how many people would try an app like that? Anybody be interested in that? Like, I think it's like kind of would be more interesting to me. In fact, I really Is that your, you had that idea already? I'm uh, sure you yeah, did. In fact, we already do that. Uh, you can access all your friends' photos and you can download them and yeah. And keep them offline? Yeah. See, that's the killer part. So you do that already? Yeah, already, you can do that on the website. On the website, right? And you can you do that on do that on an iPad, and people will freak out. If I could mm -hmm. say, I met this girl, he'd be ever, or I, I got a crush on this girl. I'm not saying I would do this, like, not really. <laughs> but I, a guy could be like, I like these five girls. Send me every photo of them, you know? Like, or actually, if it was a, I mean, it's a sort of a stalking-like feature, but it, but imagine you're stalking your favorite celebrity. So I want every Justin Bieber photo. Actually, that's the way you could do it. Is when you log in, you could say. Justin Bieber puts photos on these five different. Lady Gaga puts them on these five. The sports person puts these. The actor, this actor, puts it on these four services. And then you're pulling down all their things. And then I get to save them and keep them for all time. Um, but anyway, the, the main point I think is, um, you are in the arena. You've started the fight, and all good things happen when you start. And, and that's really what it's about. And so you've been at this for 18 months. Most companies I see will have their big moment in year two, or year three, or year four. Okay. None of them have it in year one or two. It's actually years three or four. Twitter, Foursquare, Facebook, it's always the third or the fourth year that's magical. Please, please, please promise us that you will keep iterating and get to year four. Will you do that? I promise. Okay. Well, I wanna see in two years what you, where you get, because if you got this far, you're gonna get there and you're gonna come up with something really kick-ass that breaks out. It's all about going from four, five, six, seven, right up the, the scale. Uh, let's hear it. You did a great job. Thank you. Lisa, what do you think? What do you think of the uh, photo sharing app? I can relate as, uh, well, being the organizer for Twist Paris, everybody takes photos, but getting them together in one place, so having one of the zests is really handy. Yeah. So from that perspective, I can definitely, um, or oh, we are using the product, so. Yeah. Um, I have a little bit of difficulty about the business model. Are people, when they are used to use it for free and use so many things for free, are they going to pay for it? So, yeah. and, and the business definitely is not like huge, huge, but has some decent, I think, customer base and um, with the feedback. So I think you, you got some, some yeah. input and maybe ideas what uh, could be next for Victorine. Yeah, yeah, it was great feedback. Awesome, very well done. Um, and great feedback. You can give her the microphone, I think. Um, and then, you know, the thing about usage is, in the App Store, people will buy something for a dollar. A dollar in the App Store is the same as free. A dollar in the App Store is the same as free. People. In general, unless you're like a kid or you're broke, which, you know, a small percentage of people maybe would think about it. But most adults and a lot of kids actually do not think about 99 cent apps. That's why Steve Jobs uh, was a genius, is a genius. Um, he, he got that price point right. I mean, how many people here will download a 99 cent app without thinking about it? Right. I mean, almost everybody, just, it's, just, it's essentially the same as free in people's minds. So, the fact is, if he came out, if, if the website was free forever for all the same features and the app was 99 cents, people would still pay for it. Even if they could get every single one of those features for 99 cents, I know this because the educational stuff we're doing at Mahalo is free on the web and a dollar, a 99 cents or a dollar 99 in the app, in the app store. Mm -hmm. And people know it's available for free and they still buy it because they want the convenience of the app. These were three great startups. I mean, all seven, I mean, we have a very hardcore scoring system that we go by and it's to get seven eights and nines is those are seven six sixes are okay businesses sevens are good businesses eight is an excellent business you know a great business rather nine is an excellent business and ten is reserved for otherworldly <laughs> breakouts like twitter and facebook we've never really had ten we never had ten nines are investable like yeah nine is like i might invest in this one you know like boom let's go Anyway, that was really impressive. Let's hear it for all three companies.
Hello everybody, it's Jason Calacanis, the host of This Week in Startups, and I'm here to tell you about the wonderful GoToMeeting. GoToMeeting. Wait a second. No, I gotta start here. Wait. Go to meeting. It's not easy to do that. It's much harder than it appears. Um, I use go to meeting all the time, and this is one of the great, great things uh, about having a podcast like this is that I get to pick the partners. And I made a list of the products I use every day, every week, uh, and I gave them to the sales team, and I said, hey, these are the people I would want as partners because I use their product. Right at the top of the list was go to meeting because I use it every week. Let me show you how easy it is to set up a meeting. And I'm going to guarantee you it works, and it's flawless across all of the different types of browsers and desktops, everything. It just works. And when you're setting up a meeting, by definition, it's a meeting, it's important, and you want to look like you know what you're doing. Because if you don't get that meeting started on time and easily, you look like a, you look like a dope. I cannot tell you how many times I've been on an angel investing call. How many times has this happened? We've been on a pitch, Couple. and somebody can't get a goddamn meeting set up. And you're just like, you start feeling bad for the, the person because... They've your, wasted your 10 first minutes. Impression, yeah. It's the first impression. Well, let me show you how easy it is so you don't look like an idiot when you're trying to set up an important meeting. Boom, you just go right to your desktop. This is if you got the software installed. I mean, dead simple. I want to schedule a meeting. Okay, Who, what is the name of the meeting? Tyler's Contract Renegotiation. Whatever. It's going to be today. It's going to be at 7 o'clock. Uh, it's not a reoccurring meeting. Well, it's reoccurring every year. So can I say it? As, no, it's not reoccurring. We're not <laughs> going to do this every week, Tyler. Uh, provide audio information. Use the GoToMeeting or to, uh, integrated audio. Uh, or are we going to use a conference call number? Like maybe you say, I, I don't. I, I have a bad internet connection here. I don't want to let people use the voice over IP. I don't trust the internet. I'm only going to do the conference call number. Or maybe we're only going to do voice over IP. I don't want anybody dialing in. I'm going to say provide both. And, uh, or I can put in my own conference call information. Hey, I'm going to put a password in here that Tyler rocks the house deeply. And then I just schedule that meeting, and boom, we're done. We're done, and I can go email it to other people if I want to. And an email invitation has been uh, done. I can just look at the uh, invitation text here. Boom. I can copy to my clipboard, and you're just done. And it's all done. In seconds, you've just created an easy-to-use meeting. So if you've ever had those meetings where it just works, uh, here it is. Use your microphone and speakers. A headset is recommended. Or call in using our number. Da -da -da -da. When I see that, I know the person is serious. And they got the meeting ID, and it's from GoToMeeting. It just gives you that very secure feeling that this meeting is going to go off without a hitch. Don't look like a dope by using one of these other cheap pieces of you know, garbage software that doesn't work, frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's they're, it. They're, they're dedicated to it. They've been doing it for a long time, you know. It's, it's like, in their name. Go to meeting. I mean, I don't know how many times I've got to tell you guys about right. it, but this is the it's one It's not that a works. tool that's meant for just chit-chat or whatever. It's meant for meetings. It's meant for meetings. It just gets it done. And uh, speaking of getting it done, what a great episode we have for you coming up right now. And the reason you're able to get this episode for free, the reason it exists, the reason we have HD, the reason we have beautiful lighting, the reason we have Tyler Crowley's insights, the reason we have craft services, the reason we've got engineers here who make it flawless and perfect and make sure it's uploaded to iTunes the same gosh darn day, which is a pet peeve of mine. Like, I can't tell you. I, I fight with these guys all the time. I want that video up within three hours of the end of the show. And we, it takes work. You have to bust your butt to get that uh, that show up and run. We have all this equipment. We got the TriCaster 850. That costs 40 dimes. It's not cheap. And we are so lucky to have GoToMeeting as a sponsor because it's a great product and it's flawless and it never fails. Thank you to GoToMeeting for providing everybody, everybody, with this episode. Thank you, GoToMeeting. How's that? Pretty good? That's a few of our previous startups uh here tonight, uh, would you like to hear some up updates? Uh, yeah, of course. Like what uh, has happened since yeah. uh, they yeah, pitched you? Absolutely. So, who would like to start? I see Reunique, I see Balloon. Balloon, um, I remember, yes. <laughs> Balloon is the startup doing event planning on your iPhone, interacting with the other attendees. So, Roma, tell us a little bit more. How is, uh, what, what's how is Balloon ballooned? 
<laughs> yeah, balloon, balloon. Uh, no, it's really, it's really good. Uh, only good news for us. We are, we are growing. We are recruiting. The product uh, keep growing. We are um, we included a lot of new features since uh, June or uh -huh. yeah, June, July, I think, yeah. July yes. And um, we have more and more um, customer in uh, companies, not only for. Uh, big events or seminars, but uh, um, also for training and uh, big meeting inside companies. So we can sell not only one uh, one shot, one event, but uh, packages with uh, 20, 50 events for, for companies. So that's a new business model for us and a new, new market, bigger market. Enterprise. Yeah. And they'll pay 10, 20, 30,000 a year. They'll pay 1,000, yeah. 2,000 a month. And then no they can problem. use whenever, whenever they, they need balloons, they can use a, what is the they number, can open a balloon. What is the number one feature that now that people are using it, uh, people find the most valuable? What are people getting the most value from? Um, I think it's, uh, it's still Q&A. One of the most uh, famous uh, feature is uh, live polling. Like what we used to 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 use with uh, some uh, keypad or yeah, the old, rate the, the startup. Everybody in the audience gets to rate them. Yeah, yeah. The, that's a, that's a really good features, but the, the 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 most valuable for them, I think, it's still Q and A. Like getting the most of the audience, getting feedback, getting uh, some uh, some questions, some reaction from the audience. That's uh, the still so the polling best. didn't do as well as actual questions. Yes, they, they use it a lot. They like it a lot, but I think the most uh, valuable argu um, uh, argument for them when we, when they want a balloon is then its first Q and A and getting feedback from the audience and uh, getting some content, some valuable content for them, and then use it for uh, animate the the event. Do, do you find that for the enterprises, those questions coming in become strategy and knowledge? for them to incorporate into the business. They're basically capturing the knowledge that occurred at the event for then future use. Yeah, when, uh, when, they, when they use Balloon in, in the training, they, they gather a lot of questions, they gather a lot of reaction and uh, feedback from uh, what they're talking about. And then they get on Balloon uh, a report, an, an analytics data report with all the questions. When uh, the questions, the content were asked for which speaker on which, on which subject, um, people in the audience were asking questions, and that's really uh, valuable for them for for next training and for next meeting with, uh, with the public. And if I'm the president of the company and there's a training department and I don't check in with them that often, I could go see a report as to what people thought of the new training program. Yeah, exactly. And see their reaction to it, what percentage liked it, didn't, and what their suggestions were to improve it. So I guess it's a way to inform seeing people who are not at the event of what occurred. Yeah, we're trying. We're trying on it on um, improving this uh, this report inside the company. Uh, our first customer, which uh, who use this uh, report, tell us that it's really valuable for them. So we have to work on it. But uh, um, it's a really strong feature for for next year. Because you know, in events, the number one people report they want to go to an event is networking, and number two is to learn something, um, and so. The networking sort of takes care of itself, and there are a lot of startups trying to match people at events. I'm I'm not sure that's a, an idea that's taken off just yet. Nobody's really gotten that right, I don't think, because the important people get too many people asking to meet with them, and the people who are not important don't get it, anybody. So it's sort of binary and just like the real world. Um, but this knowledge capture, that's truly unique, um, I think, and I'm seeing that in conferences. There's too many conferences. People want to actually learn something definitive and get some wisdom from it, which is why we started this format here of rating the startup and putting a number on it and saying, hey, here's a number, and here's how you could have made it better. Because we used to just give a number, and people were like, well, you, I'm a six, you know? Like, why am I not an eight? I'm an eight, I'm not a six. But then we said why, and people said, oh, well, that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of cool. I will next time try to mention those things to make the presentation better, so I think that's, you're onto something with knowledge capture, you know. Yeah. At the, at the beginning, we were thinking about these networking uh, features uh, to put on our app, but we 
we understood that, there that we can get more value for our customer in, uh, in this uh, knowledge, data, and uh, other features around uh, content in the, in the event. And interestingly, I'm sure that when, if somebody has some brilliant insight and the other people recognize that, that could spur another uh, discussion or event or you know, panel at an event. So if we're having a discussion about big data and somebody brings up you know, machine learning and somebody says, well, you know, we really should have a discussion about machine learning and who wants to opt into that? Okay, that's what we'll do in the afternoon. So like, the morning can be the general discussion. The morning then, the knowledge and the discussion from the morning defines what happens in the afternoon. Sort of like uh, an uncamp, bar camp, you know, yeah. unconference. Um, wow, congratulations, it's here for Balloon. That's really great progress. Mm -hmm. That's impressive. I'm impressed. Right, so who's the winner? T I just tonight? thought about that, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> well, usually the way Tyler and I do it is we write it down and then we guess each other. So I need a piece of paper and a pen. Yeah, so let's go through the names so we make okay, sure we... Okay, so we had... Can I have half of that, Tyler? Yeah. Victorine. Victorine was, the, was mm -hmm. the last pitch. Um, the middle one was the education one, Prep My Future. Mm -hmm. And we started with uh, Jerome of Life Show, also about the picture. And t on so, TV Life is, uh, Show, Life Show, Picturine, and Prep My Future. Prep My Future, yeah. Grab my future. <laughs> Pictorine. And what was the other one? Pictorine. Life show. Um, and life show. show. These all were very high quality startups. Do, 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 do. Now, Tali, you have picked your yes. favorite yes. and you've picked mine. As usual, yes. <laughs> and you feel confident that you've done this. On this one, I, it's not, I'm not 100% confident on this one. Yeah, we did this yesterday and I picked his and mine and he picks mine and his and we were As both always right. yeah and we, were both we almost, almost always always know how yeah. each other think that's yeah. how cl close we are uh after a god four years together it's a long time um so doing the show for two so this time i could be wrong on his favorite yeah yeah i i um all right tyler he knows mine he's got mine you think i do yeah hmm Makes it so hard. It makes it so hard. Hmm. I'm gonna change something here. Hold on a second. You guys also have to vote. You want to hear from the audience? Not yet. Not yet. Because yeah. then it will, it will affect the yeah, you're voting. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Tyler, you go first. So uh, my favorite today is just. I'm such a big believer in this space, actually, is Prep My Future. I knew that. <laughs> so she got it. And I think Jason picked, maybe, um, Life Show. I would have okay. said that. Yeah, yeah. but I'm okay. not 100%. So I actually originally put that we would both pick Prep My Future. I picked Prep My Future, and I knew you would, too. And then I changed to saying that you would pick Picturing. So... I was wrong this time. It was very difficult because you did you did show a lot of interest in Picturine, um, and but clearly prep my future. Overall, this is one you would pick as well. I think it's a bigger yeah. market, and it's yeah. clear that where people that people spend money on. This. Yes, so yeah. it's it's clearly um, the best business of the three today. Doesn't mean the other two will not be more successful. Mm -hmm. It just means at this stage that. They had the best execution to date, and I think they've got the best strategy. So it uh, doesn't mean the other two can't be bigger businesses, and mm -hmm. it's possible they will. Um, but execution is everything, and executing in the education space already looks really good. And a good strategy, this, uh, what do we call it, adaptive learning. I need to, can you explain that to me later, maybe over dinner? Explain to me what this means. Sure. And how it works. I, this is the whole reason I do the show, by the way. Everybody thinks, oh my God, people came up to us in London, it was so great, and it's been great in the States, and saying, my God, I watch every episode of the show, or I've watched this many episodes, these are my favorite guests. I've 
I learned so much from the show because you're so you guys are so honest about it, and mm-hmm. you have to, these great guests, and everybody's so honest on the show, and it's really just the only place you can get that. It's one of the few places that people actually have these kind of conversations. And then I always tell them the same thing, which is like, I actually get all my ideas from the show, and like. Everything I know is from interviewing people smarter than me about stuff, and everybody's in it together trying to learn. So um, the feeling is mutual. Uh, thanks, Tyler Crowley, for your incredible insights. Let's hear it for Tyler. How could I not? Yeah, of course. Anybody have a favorite Tyler inside? <laughs> Wheelchair at Disneyland. Uh, and let's hear it for Kirsten and all the hard work she puts into this. Five, six, one. And let's hear it one more time for the three companies that presented. Very good. Well done. And let's hear it for our hosts for hosting us. That was incredible. Look camping. I, I would say look camping, but it is look camping. C'est bon. Très bon. Très bon. Très bon. All right. We'll see you all next time.